Good morning, Code Baker. Today we're going to move the functionality of the character dialogue into the Flutter overlay. Our story continues as George tries to make friends in his new town of Happy Bay Village. An overlay will allow us to put the text on top of the screen and prevent it from moving. Prior to moving the text box components, I'm going to set the hitbox rectangle of George to 0.5. This will make the collidable area of George smaller. So you can know the inner box around George is now smaller. And the reason for this, I had problems going through the bridge and some other obstacles when George, the hitbox was set at 0.75. So by making his collidable area smaller, it makes it easier to go through these uh, barriers such as the uh, rocks you know right now I'm having some problems going between the pond and the bridge but it's doable and um, it does make it a little bit more difficult if you want to hit George against the pastry but I don't think that's the real challenge here it's the real challenge is to get him to go between the house the two houses the house with the green roof and the red roof and then to access the apple pie, which appears to be doable, although kind of challenging. With George set up to access all of the baked goods and the friends, we can now focus on the dialogue based on interaction with the friends. It was fairly difficult to go between the two houses. I'm going to set the hitbox to 0.4, so it's even smaller than it was before. This will allow us an easier time to test the interactions in case we want to grab the apple pie in the upper left hand corner and test that and then go back to one of the characters to set up the dialogue. In the My George game, I'm going to comment out the dialogue box, which is a text box component of Flame. I'm also going to comment out the variable. We set up the friend component previously to access the dialogue box. I'm going to comment this out as well. So at this stage of our development, when we're building the game, there's going to be no dialogue initially because I'm going to transfer the functionality into the Flutter widget overlay system. The reason for the change is to have a consistent system for the overlay of the non-moving parts of the screen on pub.dev, look for Animated Text Kit. We're going to install this and use it as part of our Flutter widget system that's going to be used to overlay the dialog text on top of the game. There's almost 2,800 likes on pub.dev, which is quite good. So th let's use Flutter Pub Add to add this Animated Text Kit into our system. This will Put it into the pubspec.yaml file. Then we'll be able to access this uh, when we import the package. This will give us that typewriter effect on our Flutter overlay system. There's many other text animations that we could apply with this package. However, right now we're just focused on this one feature of this rather nice package, which is the that typewriter effect. The real beauty of working with Flame is ability to rely on the entire Flutter ecosystem for these great creative packages and these widgets that other people have built. So this is just one of the many widgets that we could apply. I'm going to capture that text string for the dialogue. Previously it was in a text box component of Flame. I'm just going to have it as a string within the my George game dot dart file. We can access all the strings or all the variables from the flame dot game from within the flutter overlay system. We'll just copy that initial string. So it's the initial greeting when the game starts and it kind of tells the plot about what George is trying to do in the game. In the new dialogue overlay file, so this is the Flutter file. It's not the Flame uh, dialog box. This is a new file that we created. 
we're going to pass it over the entire game so that we can get access to the variables. Uh, let's first start off with this animated text kit. This is the package that we just installed from pub.dev. This will give us the typewriter effect that ch -ch -ch within the Flutter system. Since the, the string that we want for the initial message is within the flame game, the my George game, we're going to create a, a variable or a final here for game. And we're going to pass it over when we call up the dialog overlay. So back in the overlay controller, we'll just pass it the game. Uh, make sure that's not a const. Okay, back in the dialog overlay file now, we should have access to the game and that specific string that we want to show the message. Keep in mind that every time we change the string, so initially we won't change the string, but when we do change the string, the overlay system is a listener. So we're going to have to notify the listeners uh, when we change it. So when we just set it up, it has access to the variable, the current contents, and then it listens for changes. But let's set up this animated text kit. The documentation is on pub.dev, and you could modify this to suit your taste. But how I've set it up is, whoa, I think I misspelled, uh, is that right? Typer animated text? Okay, I just glanced at the documentation. There is both typewriter and typer. So I think I'll just go with typer. I'm not quite sure what the difference is between typewriter, animated text, and typer. Um, they look pretty similar. So let's set up the text style right after the string. So remember that game dot dialog message is the string from the my George game. The documentation for the text style, that's just a Flutter style, which is it's the same as if you were to do a text widget. So you could refer to that. There's this new uh, speed property, which is from this typer animated text. And that is going to re require a, a duration. Uh, that's from Dart. So this duration documentation would be built into Dart, but it's pretty simple. It's just duration and then there's a parentheses. In this case, we're using milliseconds. So we're going to wait 100 milliseconds between each character that appears. This is repeating animation. That's from the uh, animated text kit package. And it, uh, it's a property so that we're not going to repeat the text again and again in a loop. Also, on finished is also from the animated text kit. And when the when it finishes typing in, uh, we're gonna right now just print this text dialog is finished. Most of these new commands or properties are from the animated text kit. Oh yeah, it's, it's looking pretty good here. It's exactly what we want. This package is awesome. So you should maybe check it out for some of your other Flutter projects too. Um, I'm going to want to put a background, some type of tint um, under the text to make it easier to see when the character is moving around the screen. So we'll just set up the same strategy, which is we'll make a container and wrap it around that piece of text. And then we'll copy the color that we used for the previous score, which is this kind of smoky gray or uh, it's almost like a black window tint that goes under it. There is some transparency to it and you can play around with the transparency and the color. We just want to make the dialog text portion be viewable. There may be an easier way to make the text disappear after it's finished typing in. I couldn't find a property in animated text kit. So what I'm going to do is set up a Boolean variable to show the dialog or not. And we, we're gonna check for the Boolean variable, which we're gonna call show dialog. We'll initially set it to true because when the game first starts, 
we want George to give this little greeting to the audience or, you know, to the player to kind of set up the plot as to what George is doing. So initially the show dialogue will be true and the text will start playing as soon as the game starts. After the text has completed being typed in and it's done, we're going to set the game.show dialogue to false and we're going to notify the overlay listener. So remember the overlay is a listener and it's notifying for, it's, it's listening for some type of change. When that variable changes, you need to notify the listener in order for the overlay to actually change. Otherwise, it's not going to rebuild the Flutter widget. So the way to, we're going to show it or not, is we're going to use a ternary operator. And a ternary operator, it's like an if statement. It looks a little weird at first if you're not familiar with ternary operators, but the first part of the ternary operator is simply a Boolean variable or some type of if statement. It's some Boolean logic. So we had the show dialog, it's either true or false. So it's very, very similar to an if statement. And after that, there's this question mark. And so if the statement is true, then it's going to show what's, what's after the question mark. Or else, so it's kind of like a shortcut for if else, it's after the colon. So there's two parts of this. It's whatever is after the question mark is run if that first part is true. Everything after the colon is run if that first part is false, which is a blank container. So theoretically, when this thing is done, it should set it to false and it should, whoa, there it goes. It works, beautiful. Switch to the friend component file. We're in a different file now. We're gonna adjust the messages when George has an interaction with one of his neighbors. There's two conditions. Either he successfully makes the friend, and it's just simply based on whether he has a baked good in his hands or in, in the inventory at time of meeting with the new neighbor, or uh, he, he doesn't have a baked goods. In, case, in that case, the neighbor, uh, it's just, you know, the neighbor's busy uh, and uh, doesn't actually invite George over for dinner. We're going to change the string, this game.dialog message, in the, both of the two conditions, and then notify the overlays dot not listeners. Okay, let's test out our George with the small hitbox around George. I'm testing it, after, so I'm waiting for the text to complete at this stage, because there is a problem at this stage if you there's, if there's two pieces of text that want to appear at the same time. And there's also a problem if we don't sh uh, put the show dialogue back to true at the time of collision. So let's do that. So this is again in the friend component when a collision takes place between George and the friend. Collision is kind of the technical term, but I like to think of it more as like a, a meeting, a meeting of friends. So we're gonna test the friend text component, a text dialogue after the first piece of text has finished and is off the screen and it works. So it's basically working as expected and it's kind of difficult for me, even with the smaller George to get access the friend under the red house because this giant forest is blocking it and we have to go over the bridge. So I'm just going to restart the game to test the secondary condition where George has a piece of cake. He brings the chocolate cake over to the neighbor and now it's successful. The, the neighbor is inviting George over for dinner on Saturday. I'm going to change the gameplay so that George can only move when the text dialog is not on the screen. So it almost will be like a, almost like a visual novel for this portion where the dialog, uh, we want the user to read the dialog. Um, it will slow down the gameplay. Uh, it's not as much action 
However, we want them to read it, and then after that, the character can move. So when the text is on the screen, the character won't move. So if you, I'm clicking on it right now, and Georgia is not moving until the text has disappeared. We have to maybe test it with some other people to see whether they get frustrated. You know, already there's this issue that we don't have a virtual joystick and so it's not supposed to be a super fast moving game. Um, there, there is this challenge also the controller itself is uh, fairly rudimentary but the logic seems to be working here and uh, I actually it's possible to get that lower friend but uh, it takes a while because you have to go over the bridge. I think I think you need to go over the bridge. I guess that's one way to access. It. I think it's blocked off on the left-hand side with these trees. So I'll just test the secondary condition where he doesn't have the pastry, and everything seems to be working. So it's looking good right now. All right, congratulations! Looks very solid. Subscribe to the channel for updates on the more than 50 videos I've made on Flame. The videos with source code are also available for free on Teachable, 100% free course. This is a hobby. In whatever way you choose to learn, make sure you have fun and unleash your creativity. Have a fantastic day.